Okay, so we're going to be going over uh, a lateral version of a sumi geishi. Um, used to see it a lot in, in judo, not so much anymore, uh, but you definitely see it a lot in, in sambo. So before we get lateral, we're going to go over just the classic entry to it and then go lateral with it. And we're doing no gi because um, some people are talking about Ronda Rousey doing this. <laughs> Uh, in MMA, so you know you can do this no gi as well. So that's right. kind of where we're going with this. So okay. So the important part is to stop thinking about sumigeshi being basically like you're kicking the guy in the balls. You know your your legs straight when you flip them over and you get them that way. And it's it's a very valid way of doing it, but just as valid is cocking and catching the inside of the thigh. Okay. And it doesn't really matter which way I do this. If I do it from the far leg or if I do it on the near side leg, it's still the same kind of leg propping action as we go backwards. Right. Okay? So if we're going to do this no gi style, all I'm going to do is get an over under, step in, and catch the inside of his thigh with my, my foot. Okay? Cock your foot kind of like this, like you're doing a Captain Morgan. Okay? And put it right on the inside of the thigh. Mm hmm. You tuck your butt down and try and sit on your heels and then extend the leg and push him over that way. Can you guys move toward to more of the middle of the mat so you don't take poor John off the mat? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to come through here, over under, step in, catch the inside of the thigh, and as I sit down on butt to heels, I'm going to roll him back because that keeps my body nice. And you'll be rolling back over your left buttocks and left Right. Shoulder really over the left side here completely. Yeah. Right. We do that again. Let me from that same position. I'll get a different angle. And this is you getting your overhook or your wizard with your left hand, and this is almost a straight in, but the way you're jamming the foot in there. Right. Okay. Right. So now we're going to add a different step to it. We're going to go two on one and then we'll go lateral. So before it was over under. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to take the two on one, okay, step in, and again, as soon as I step in, everything else is the same. Okay, Before I'm going to come from in. the back end here to catch a better view of the throw itself. Okay. So the only difference is where I'm gripping. Instead of over under, it's on the hand. Okay. Okay. So again, step in, catch, roll back. Mm -hmm. Now I know you've used that uh, in both sambo and judo. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember in Germany you threw a guy with this, and yep. uh, got Bazaar or Pawn, I can't remember, but uh, yeah, 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 and you, you slammed them pretty good. Now that's your rolling style. You've got it. Uh, can you do that where it's strictly lateral, where it's coming across the side? Yep. Okay. So this time, as we catch the two on one, I'm going to take a step and catch right in there. Okay. So you're literally. Th this is actually. A pure lateral movement because it is, and, and you're going to be rolling to your left rear side. Yep. So as I come in here, catch, sit down, and he's going to go back that way. Okay. It comes right over on top. You'll see this one a little more in Sambo because of the extreme angles the guys fight. Right. And, and, and the defensive bent over posture, or even not defensive bent over posture, a lot of we're, them we're letting catch. Like in a, a more of a Sambo match. Butt out a little bit, and we've got grips. You, like Steve says, you see this a lot. They'll either take this grip or in there, step in, boom. You know, catch the guy. Right. Worrying about going this way, and now we're going this way. Yeah, and and also a point that a lot of people miss is your setup, your base leg. In this in this case, your right foot. When you step across, in this particular setup, you literally laterally come across, mm -hmm. and that provides a base. So with your right foot, when you're setting up there and now that gives you a really easy shot right in there and you roll to your left buttocks rolling them over that way now last piece of this whole puzzle is especially since i'm coming in on a sugar foot or a, a lefty stance even if i'm a righty his lead leg a lot of times is in the way 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get pushy, is, mm -hmm. is what, what I call it. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to fake a, an O-Uchi, okay? So like that, right? I want to get his foot out of the way. Now if I get even pushier with it, okay, he thinks O-Uchi, and all I'm doing is I'm taking that step, like I'm going to hook the leg, and I put my foot down and I pop my leg back, that forces his hip out of the way. Step, catch. Okay. Okay, so even if he's not giving me the lane I want, he's giving me this front leg, and that would normally block me. Okay, so I just, boom, step, catch, and over we go. Mm -hmm. That inside pop of that left foot is, is a really useful, in this case, you're using a sumigeishi. Right. Uh, by the way, sumigeishi is the, uh, called corner counter. And uh, initially, it was, it was taught as a counter throw and developed in Kodokan Judo as such. It still retained the name. So it is a corner, corner rolling type throw. Uh, but that, that pop, that left foot pop, is really used a lot in a lot of different throws. Yeah. Let's explore that. So you got your nice two-on-one there. You right. tie them up. So, you just really give them. It, it's, it's a hard shot. Just make them, make them move. You just want them to move. That's it. That's it. Right mm -hmm. there. I can come across and I can catch him with a, a lateral version of a, an Osoto or crossbody. Inside right. Ko Chigaki, yeah. inside, inside uh, leg reap, you know, inside leg hook. Yep, or even if you deep in, you know, like Becky always did that deep coachy. So, uh -huh. you know, yeah. so they're all there, but you're popping the foot out of the way. So the point is we're trying to make for everybody here is we're getting, you're using that left foot and you're using kind of the, the backside of your thigh. Mm -hmm. your right, body. right through here. As you step in, just like that, it comes down. And then the action of popping your hip back and straightening that leg, the thigh knocks his leg out of the way. And he, and he does that. On, he says, no, you're not attacking my leg. I'm getting out of the way. I mean, I'm going to go over here. That opens the hips up right into that lateral attack. So he's here. I'm going to step out of the way of your attacking leg. But I've now open that lateral lane for the attack. Can okay, you show us, a, you know, just set it and okay. pour John there. Boom. There goes his, his leg. Mm -hmm. Okay. Big step, catch, don't worry about this. So in this case, you're going to do the same thing, only do sumi geishi. Right. All right. So same idea, two on one grip, okay? Boom, he moves that leg out of the way because he thinks I'm attacking there. Step, catch, over we go. This is a very versatile throw. I, I've always called this the, the tall person's tomoanagi. Tomonagi was always so popular, still is. It's a wonderful technique and a, and a great, great throw. Uh, but uh, John, how tall are you? About six four. Six three. Yeah, you're you're, you're a tall guy. Uh, and, and 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 Derek, you you've used Tomonagi, but you're tall for your weight class. Yeah. You know, and this is the perfect throw for a person with long legs. So, uh, whereas someone maybe has short legs and a very low center of gravity, Tomonagi is ideal. Uh, Sumigeishi is just a perfect throw for taller, long-limbed people. So that's why I always call it uh, the Tomonagi for, for tall people. It really does work. And there's so many ways to set it up, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. So l let's recap the, the, the first one you showed and the, the very side lateral. And also, we've had some questions about uh, how to get a two-on-one, a tie-up. You know, when you're grappling, whether it's a gi or no gi, when you're pummeling and fighting and, and grip fighting, um, you really just want to get control of it where his arm is just tucked in and has, has no use of it. You want to make it where there's no use of it. Right. And you can see it just trap in there. Right. And it's just a matter of being determined to catch the grip you want. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of times when I'm in a no-gi situation, you get into this sort of lockup. You know, you pass right. the hand through, okay, look to the side, shrug the shoulder, it comes right into your hand, mm -hmm. pull down. Grip the arm. That's straight from John mm -hmm. Saylor. Yeah, it's just it's, it's a good standard shuck from wrestling. Uh, yeah. Nothing, you know, amazing. You know, just a good shuck down to get the, the arm. You can also take it in off, off of an arm drag, catch, grip. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I'm here. Okay. There's your two on one, and and you hug that pretty tight. There's not oh, a lot yeah. of space between his arm and your your chest. No. When I get a two on one, I I'm hugging this right in there. I want to try and get the side of the elbow right into my chest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Similar to, to when I'm arm locking, I wanted him like this, the point of the elbow into my chest. I want the side of it in here so I can literally just hug it in, and he's literally going to have to push off with the other hand 
to get his arm up out of there. Yeah, a lot of times they'll push on your hip, push on this just to right. pop away. Yeah. Right. And start try to square up. But once they do try to square up, boy, are they getting set up for some other stuff too. Yeah, right. Right. So that's why it's a really good setup. The two on ones are great, great grip. Love it. Okay. Well, can you just show those uh, one more time? They'll wrap it up. Okay. So over under, classic simulation, catch. By the way, when you do that classic sumi geisha, your left shin is basically going in his right, um, his right inside of his thigh. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. And then we do two on one classic sumi geisha. Right up into it. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to do a two on one lateral sumi geisha. This is this has always been my favorite. Uh, a lot of our welcome guys, you included, have, have used this with great success in judo sambo. MMA submission grappling. It's a great setup. It okay. really is. It's a great throw, I should say. So you'll, you'll find it anywhere that grappling and throwing is able to be done, you can fit this throw in there. Yes, you sure can. Yeah. Very versatile. Two on one. Step in. Come right in there. Good. By the way, this, uh, we do, uh, we were talking about this earlier uh, off camera. Uh, winning on the mat, uh, we have a, a variation, the, the lateral style. Uh, Kelvin nicely does it quite well. And then also in the upcoming um, uh, Sambo Encyclopedia, we have this throw featured with you doing it with uh, um, Eric, actually, Eric, right, uh, Eric right. Weaver. So uh, we'll be doing this. So uh, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're out there, and we might have this also other places on our YouTube channel. But we I'm wonder, pretty sure we have at least one or two videos on, on this variation. Because we, we like this technique. This is yeah. a good move. And, uh, you know, so we've had some people wanting to study some sumigeshi and you guys were thinking about it so why not do a video on it so thanks a lot guys